Hi everybody, I'm Mike Azier and this is my March 2006 video commentary. Now last month, if you remember, we talked about mortgage-backed securities. And if you remember, and if you don't, I'm going to remind you, the single biggest problem with mortgage-backed securities for investors is the fact that homeowners can prepay their mortgages whenever they want. That prepayment risk makes it hard for some investors to own those kinds of securities. Uh, for example, I think I explained last month that if prepayment speeds get faster because interest rates have dropped, then the lifespan of the mortgage-backed security is going to become tremendously short, which is not good for people that like longer-term investments. And for anybody that likes short-term investments, if prepayment speeds slow down, the life of the mortgage-backed security will extend, and that will mess you up. The topic for this month, and I'm going to, I'm going to encompass it with one term, structured securities. And I'm going to base my primary discussion with you about CMOs, collateralized mortgage obligations. Anytime you have some sort of investment product that has features that might be undesirable to some people, Wall Street's gotten very good at trying to mitigate those problems. And the, those, those letters, CMO, a collateralized mortgage obligation, is tremendously similar to a lot of the other acronyms you might have heard of. CBOs, which are collateralized bond obligations. CLOs, which are collateralized loan obligations. Um, CDOs, which are collateralized debt obligations. But let me give you the most simple of examples, and if you understand this, you're gonna be well on your way to understanding all this stuff. Imagine this, let's say I'm a brokerage firm. I go out and I buy a hundred million dollars worth of some Fannie Mae mortgage-backed securities, which have obviously that prepayment problem I was just talking about. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the hundred million and package it into a new security. I'm gonna set it up as, as its own legal entity, but to keep it simple, the hundred million dollars of Fannie Mae's is the collateral for our collateralized mortgage obligation. What I'm gonna do now is cut it into two different pieces. I'm gonna slice it in half. Now this is an enormously simple example. So I have now these two $50 million pieces, which are new securities in their own right. They're gonna get their own unique identifiers. They're gonna get bought by probably different investors. The word you're gonna probably hear used to describe them, tranche, which is, a, is, is from the French language. Tranche describes a slice of something. So now I've got tranche A, I've got tranche B. Now, on a monthly basis, clearly money's gonna be flowing in from this $100 million worth of securities. Uh, and there's two kinds, there's principal and interest. Obviously, I have to give both our investors, tranche A and tranche B, interest on their money. But here's what I'm gonna do. Whatever principal comes in, whether it's what's scheduled to get paid or, or some homeowner prepays, doesn't matter. I'm gonna take all that principal, I'm gonna give it to tranche A, and I'm gonna keep giving it to them until their $50 million has been repaid to them and tranche A is retired. And of course, with tranche A retired, money's continuing to come in, now I'm gonna give the other 50 million to tranche B. And if you think about what just happened there, if I'm one of those investors that like shorter term kind of investments, I might be interested in tranche A because there's no chance of me getting stuck in that for 30 years because I'm going to get the first 50 million that comes in. The investor that likes longer term stuff might be really interested in tranche B. They're going to get the other 50 million. Now, I didn't get rid of the prepayment risk. You can't get rid of it, but I can alter the way I allocate it, which is what I'm doing here. And whatever the investment product, like with a CBO, which are collateralized bonds, the probable kind of bond we're gonna use there are junk bonds that have credit risk. I can't get rid of the credit risk, but I could also change the way I allocate it, same way. Take 100 million of junk bonds, cut it into two fifty million million pieces, allocate the, the defaults to one tranche, which is obviously gonna be very badly rated, but it's gonna get a very high yield. But I can also create a higher quality, perhaps an investment grade tranche. So whatever the problem, prepayment risk, credit risk, whatever it is, I can mitigate it by using this structuring technique. And if you followed along with that example, you're well on your way to understanding these kinds of products. And as we go through the next several months, I wanna start getting us into these increasingly more complex securities. and. Uh, and obviously you've noticed the change of venue for this month. I figured I had to go out to the store anyway. I'd bring you along.
This is called multitasking. But anyway, uh, I hope all's been well with you guys. Please tune in again next month, and I will see you here on the Internet. You take care.